today's class will be very short. Okay. First of all, I'll be telling you about the exercise for the interview and data loading. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Okay, so the exercise should be having three parts, obviously ETL, extract, transform, and loading. Actually, it's not exactly the ETL part, just to small transformation I have given to you. Just for, I mean, quick, whatever we have learned for this last three or four days, just a quick practice on top of them. But we, did, we are not creating any dimensions, not creating any facts. So transformation part, we are not uh, much focusing on top of the technicality. I mean, whatever we have learned in BI session, it's not exactly the same thing. But yeah, definitely I'll be also creating this kind of exercise. This is just a quick recap what we have covered. So the first thing is create data frame based on each of the subject areas. Just open the Excel, there should be three sheets. Okay, open, I mean import each of the sheets data into data frame, a single data frame. Okay, so you are taking data from the flat file and pulling it to data frames. Pull all those three data frames. You need to do some transformation to have those final four columns in your final data frame customer name purchase date outlet branch name and product name okay so i mean uh, create those transformation i mean create the final data frame such a way so that the four columns should be there in a single data frame the relationship between the four columns should be established there and that should be present in the final data frame when this data frame is ready, then load the same data frame into a snowflake table. And the strategy of loading the data should be truncate and load. Okay. So please try this thing. I'll be just quickly showing you now about the snowflake stuff I haven't showed you. There are, I mean, some more parameters we need to pass while creating the snowflake. You will be using the same library, SQL Alchemy, no issue. Or you can use any other libraries as well for Python, Snowflake Connector. Uh, there are lots of libraries available. But I mean, uh, SQL Alchemy you can use. I mean, that particular library is I mean, useful for all the different, different databases. So SQL Alchemy you can use, but a change should be there. Let me show you. So maybe a few days ago, I have showed you how we can connect now with uh, let me just show you just a second this tab is not working properly i hope you have opened your own snowflake account there Okay, so when you will be opening, the thing should be coming in this manner with worksheets. Just go through on any one of the worksheet that you are having. Okay, so then you can able to see the databases view in this view. So I just created a database. This is the database. Go to one particular uh, sheet and just i mean you should be having the role over here in snowflake you need to also check the role because the particular role should be having all the access i mean whether you can create ddl or not you can find the same thing so you can find that a particular default role should be assigned to you that is called account admin the same naming convention should be there for your side too this is by default it should be there and 
A particular warehouse should be also be created for you. That is called compute underscore wh. The same naming convention should be there for you as well. Please log in and check it. And I just created a separate, this particular Snowflake sample data, this database was already existed in the Snowflake. I just created another database called data data underscore data virus DW. Just like simple command, create database, database name. After I executed it, our new database is there. So for a quick check, you can do some operation just like create schema. I mean, create particular tables or anything. You can quickly test it on public schema, not information schema. Just go ahead in public schema of this data warehouse. Just try creating some tables. Okay. When it is done, then I mean you are quite ready to land your first table inside Snowflake by automated Python job. So just quickly try the same for one and two command execution. You can also get this kind of tables available. The sample data, you can also check it. There are lots of tables available over here. You can check these things. And when those things are done, create your own database and just have a quick try of table creation by your own. When everything is fine, I'm not going with details in Snowflake. Snowflake is also a huge thing. This database is, I mean, in market, it's capturing lots of clients. Because now clients are moving to Snowflake database gradually. Due to that, I mean, uh, the backend is cloud. I think I have showed you while uh, doing the account creation and all. The backend we need to choose either it can be AWS cloud or it can be Azure or it can be GCP. And uh, we have lots of advantages things over here. What's the difference between information schema and public schema? Information schema is generally for the metadata schema. It stores, I mean, whatever tables resides in public, information schema will store this kind of, I mean, information. Okay. Information schema is called metadata schema. So whatever things I'll be creating in public, the same information will be kept inside information schema. Just like I have 10 tables in public. If we have, I mean, other schemas as well. So whatever things I'm residing in which, uh, I mean, which table I'm residing, which where and for, where, what, are, what are the particular columns for that particular tables, those kind of information. Those are called metadata. Information are recited in information schemas, okay? What are the different roles available? What are the different tables available? What are the object privileges? All of those stuffs are there. Now, while connecting with Python, how you can pass the parameter. So, uh, okay. This is the main thing. Actually, the same SQL alchemy, you need to import the create engine. That is fine. This line is same. Whatever we have used for MySQL database, the same line for this one. But the only change should be, we need to pass lots of parameters. Okay. Over there, we just use, uh, in, in if we have MySQL things open in your cases, just you can see there are user, colon, password, and uh, there should be server name. Okay. And slash database name. I think those are all things. Schema name was also there. Database name, schema names. There was a single database, so that is why we are calling directly the schema name. Server name slash schema name for MySQL. But over here, we need to pass some more parameters, just like warehouse name. In Snowflake, we can use multiple warehouse to connect a single database. Warehouse is especially for a um, scaling purpose. Scaling means, uh, suppose I need a big warehouse. I mean, big warehouse should be helping us with quick computing. Yeah. The same database can be accessed by multiple warehouse. The warehouse size, if the warehouse size is big, then 
my compute power should be the wire i mean uh, the snowflake compute power should be higher okay just i'm giving this concepts to run this thing because but snowflake is having its huge own concept about role warehouses and all just know the basics and try to execute the thing i mean just use this thing as a database tool okay so apart from the schema name just use what is warehouse name and what is role name okay as there are lots of parameter i am not passing directly the value within it i pass the value separately by variables okay and those variables i'm calling it's a f string you can see and this there was pi i mean uh, mysql plus pi mysql it was there earlier for mysql stuff just replace this thing by snowflake that's it you can directly pass the entire string no issue should be there but i'm passing separately i'm passing everything in a way i mean within those variable and variables are passed over here okay so that's the difference that should be uh, your own choice i'm just passing this thing to you okay and pass all the parameter just like account identifier what should be your account identifier so when you have logged in uh, you can see you will be receiving some mail i think you have received some mail let me show you quickly my mail id is I hope you receive this kind of mail so over there they will be using i mean they will be showing your dedicated login so i think you are logging now with this particular portal so this should be your account id starting from app to 190 so just copy this account id and paste it over there this is your account identifier or account id username the user particular username that is user id password so that is common for all the database particular database name so the database i just created there schema name inside the database i have to perform with particular schema which schema i'll be creating those tables and all particular warehouse names and the role name so i just put all those variables over here so you can create by your own that should be modified okay so create your own and try to connect the snowflake database i hope there will be no issue but if there is any issue please tell me so when the particular data i mean connection is created i faced one more challenges let me show you yeah so what i'm doing over here i'm uh, calling pandas i also try to import a csv file and i'm calling this thing in a data frame dft okay now i'm just trying to push dft dot to sql i'm giving the num teacher let me just put teacher new okay uh, earlier i also told the loading strategy over here so i mean now uh, if exist what should be there it should be appended mode or what mode you need to push it over here just check it and do it your usual way i'm just now creating a new table and pushing it as of now so let me run this thing test yes so i'm getting this kind of error snowflake doesn't support indexes if i just print the value of dft okay let me print the dft value this is the data frame what i imported from the excel 
sorry the csv dft i have imported from the csv file now i'm trying to simply push it the similar way i have done in mysql so mysql supported the indexes so this is the particular indexes it's coming okay so it's able to print the data but while pushing the same data into my i mean ms uh, sorry uh, snowflake it's throwing the error because it's not able to handle the index to insert okay so for that reason there is another parameter in to sql so index equal pass boolean false so there will be removing index while pushing this thing into snowflake okay so no index should be pushed only id and subject should be pushed there okay now let's run it yeah the process is completed let me check teacher name is created there or not yes teacher is new is just created you can see the date times and all so it's just created few times ago yes the ddl is fine the details they're showing those things uh, which is who is the owner means what is the role of this account by which i have inserted it okay so uh, you can also see uh, the timings created two days ago why yeah teacher was created two days ago yeah created just now just i have created it so this is how you can do the snowflake part try this exercise and please send me this thing by mail i'll be checking it and uh, by tomorrow we can quickly i mean whoever is stacking in which place will be checking it and after that i'll be showing you with the incremental data load okay that particular thing i have told you to complete by truncate load strategy this is the easiest load strategy but as i told incremental data load or data delta data load it's one of the important thing we need to check because if we have millions of records at the source system coming daily basis if we go ahead with truncate load each and every day it should be taking huge time or huge cost as well so the delta load means whichever new records that will be coming will be extracting the same from the source system and pushing it to target system so for that i'll be also preparing one i'll be trying to prepare or i'll be having a quick hands on in the same day maybe tomorrow to show you but this is simple truncate load please try this thing and share me the coding part uh, to my mail id okay i'll be checking if there is any stuck point we can quickly go through this thing in tomorrow's session uh okay one more thing i just want to tell you any doubt so far from anyone any doubt no doubt okay so please try to solve it i'll be just providing the same thing uh, in the whatsapp group okay and the last thing i want to mention yes so apart from that i'll be also showing you uh, okay for analytics part uh, i haven't installed or i haven't uh, prepared the thing for power bi maybe next session i'll be trying to install and have some hands on session for you but till that time you can use a particular python library called matplotlib okay matplotlib in python will be also helping us with analytics or graphical result it should be helping with graphical interface so the module name is matplotlib within matplotlib import the module pyplot so matplotlib.pyplot i just alias is as plot plt okay so as of now it's not required let me just i commented out these things it's very simple actually 
I just declare two different different list x and y. Okay, and I'm calling this function under plt. There is a function called plot. I call the function and pass two two parameters. One is x and another is one is y. X is independent variable and y is dependent variable. Okay, and after that, I'm just uh, giving the command show, plt.show. Let me run this query, uh, run this particular code. Okay, so it will be helping me with this kind of line chart. So over here, this plot is basically a line chart. I can also change this kind of thing. Uh, maybe with any other plot, you can see what are the plots available. Just put a dot and it will be helping you. What are the different, different functions? Just like scatter, I can use scatter plot. Okay, this is the scatter plot for each of the independent variable what should be the dependent variables value i can use uh, suppose bar plot is there yes okay so this kind of scenario you can quickly have exercise on top of that check with the different kind of functions available within plot i mean plt those functions are individual charts and graphs for the practical scenarios, uh, just like this one, I'm now commenting out this part. For practical scenario, I, I'm using pandas. I'm using, I'm reading a file, the same file, whatever we have read out earlier, exam result. I'm putting it to DF, a data frame. I'm doing some grouping by name and subject i'm doing mean and all after that i'm creating a subplot called x okay within the subplot i'm doing nothing just i'm calling x dot bar plot a bar plot inside the bar plot i'm passing two parameters one is data frames within the data frame i'm passing name as independent one and the dependent one is marks within the data frame the same name and marks was there earlier the same thing i'm using over here name and marks name should be independent and mark should be my dependent variable and the same thing plot dot show whatever it's returning let me show you okay so this is a particular uh, i mean student actually we checked it the data from already checked it earlier so each of the individual student and their marks is being shown in this manner so you can use multiple, uh, just like bar plot, you can use scatter plot, line chart, sim simple plot, or lots of things are there. Okay, check it. Uh, please quickly practice it at your own way. I'll not be going at much details within uh, this part over here um, by the analytics part, but definitely I'm trying to have a uh, quick installation of a particular software, just like Power BI, because Power BI is having I mean, no licensing cost as well as no trial version limitation. I mean, trial is limitation. So I'll be trying to install it and I'll quickly show you some of the good plots. But the main plots should be just like looking like this. So if, if you want to have any plotting part in data frame, so this kind of plot you can see over there in your real life experience okay okay so uh i'll not be continue much more today so please try to solve this exercise and send me by mail id and we will be i'll be trying to review it and as soon as uh, it's completed i'll be just providing you how to do the incremental data load in tomorrow's session okay any doubt so far yeah ramya yeah uh so so what is this uh, FIZ in the line 14? It's figure, figure AX. 
So okay. it is a index. It's a subplot. You can uh, put another figure just like this one. Suppose uh, this particular figure's name is AX, AX. So I'm just oh. calling this thing AX in latter part, just like this one, PLT dot bar plot. I can give another plot just like BX or any other thing. Later, I can just customize it. What is BX and all? I'm just declaring what is the name of that subplot. Okay. Okay. Also, uh, can we give names to the x axis and y axis in the yeah, uh, yeah, 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 those are, I mean, uh, the extra things. Yeah, we can okay. just put those kind of thing too. What is okay. the x axis name? What is the y axis names? And all, sure, sure. Okay, I'm not covering uh, details in plotting part as of now. Uh, uh, as I'm just for analytics purpose, I'm trying to install the uh, Power BI. And uh, I'll be trying to demonstrate the same thing. So not focusing this much over here. And uh, if I can quickly install it, I can cover up the same thing in this session. But this is very hard to cover it. I'll be trying to plan the same thing in next session. And I'll also tell you to join in the next session for only those classes. For, I mean, as of now, you can just schedule for few days, two, three days for Power BI maybe for next session. So I'll be requesting you when I'll be trying to teach the same thing, I'll be putting message on WhatsApp. Okay. Uh, any other doubt from anyone? Okay, I'm providing the exercise to you for Python in a WhatsApp group. And please solve this thing. I'm just providing my mail IDs as well. Okay, so please send me this thing by mail ID. And tomorrow we'll be practicing the same thing as well as if we have some time, we can quickly go ahead with the hands-on part for incremental data load. Okay, okay, so fine as of now, I'm closing the session for today. Let's connect tomorrow. Okay, okay, thanks. Thanks everyone, bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.